Hello everyone, Crow here, and uh, today I'm going to be looking at Earthbound for the NES. Um, now this is in Japan known as Mother, and this game actually was never officially released in the U.S. However, uh, uh, the actual game had been completely translated and censored according to Nintendo's policies at the time. Uh, the game was originally going to be released around 1991, but... Uh, because Nintendo was focusing on the Super Nintendo at the time, they didn't really want to uh, spend any money on releasing this game uh, because of um, the production costs and the um, pack and materials, the boxes, and, and the, you know things like the manual for the game. Uh, this was up for release again in 1994, just before uh, what we know as Earthbound for the Super Nintendo was going to be released. And they thought that, you know, they could release this game to give get people acclimated to the game. But, again, um, just the cost of producing the cartridges and the manuals, um, they didn't they didn't want to go ahead and do that. So, in the U.S., Earthbound for the Super Nintendo, known as Mother 2 in Japan, is actually the first Earthbound game we got. Um, I'm going to, in the description, I'm going to put a link to the entire story. I could actually go over the whole entire story, and it would probably you know, may bore a lot of people, but I found it really interesting. But what it, what this is here is actually a replica of the prototype cartridge. And um, it, it even has a ba battery backup in it. Um, if you're looking to play this emulated, um, it's known as Earthbound Zero um, because of some uh, ROM, ha or ROM hacks that needed to be done to get it to work with emulators. But this is the unhacked version. Um, I got picked this up at a video game store, um, saw it in the glass case, and I was like, hmm, interesting, and I picked it up for purchase, so let's plug this in and check out some footage of Earthbound on the NES. Now, before I go any further, I should mention that I have not played the Super Nintendo Earthbound. It's something, it's a game I have... Uh, and I do intend on playing it someday, but I never got around to playing it. And since I got Earthbound on the NES, I wanted to play this one first, since it really did come before the Super Nintendo version. So, long story short, I won't be able to compare this game to the Super Nintendo Earthbound. But on to the game at hand. When you select a new game file on this game, you are given the opportunity to name the main characters in the game. Now what I did was, I actually named them what they were supposed to be in the game. Uh, the game doesn't actually give you the default names, but I went ahead and named them Ninten, Anna, uh, Lloyd, and Teddy, since that's what their names really are. But you could actually go ahead and name them whatever you wanted. So after that, you'll start the game in your room when, all of a sudden, your lamp attacks you. Yes, the very first thing that happens in the game is you get attacked by a lamp. And it actually sets a really good mood for the game because, you know, what other RPG or game in general are you going to get attacked by a lamp? Also, it's very odd for an RPG coming out in the late 80s, early 90s to be based in the present day. So as it turns out, there was a poltergeist attacking the house. And as it turns out, there's other strange occurrences happening all over the world. So what does your mother and your father suggest? They suggest that you go out and investigate, seeing as how you have psychic powers. And that's about as far as I'll go into the story, because there might be some people actually interested in playing this game for themselves, and I don't want to ruin anything for them. What I will get into is some of the unique aspects of the game. Like, for example, how you save the game. Now, to save the game, you actually have to locate a telephone and call your dad. Now, what's interesting is when you do this, your dad will actually give you money. Uh, and that money is based on the enemies you had killed during the last time you saved your game. But he doesn't give you your money directly. Instead, he deposits it into a bank account, which you then have to withdraw from a bank machine using a cash card. Another unique thing about this game are the weird things that you'll fight during the course of the game. And when I mean weird, I don't mean like weird monsters. I mean weird things to actually be fighting in an RPG, such as farmers, hippies, bag ladies, cars and trucks. 
the fighting in this game is turn-based, and what that means is before each round of battle, you have to select everybody's moves in advance and then let the turn play out. And this means you have to think in advance of who's going to attack first, who they might defeat. Because if you tell uh, two people to attack the same person, and the first person actually defeats the enemy, then the second person is going to basically attack thin air, even if there is another enemy there to attack. It's a bit of a drawback in gameplay, but if I remember correctly, there were a lot of games back in the day that were like this. Moving on to modes of transportation in the game, for the most part, especially during the early parts of the game, you'll just be walking everywhere. There is no real overworld map to speak of, but there is a map you can look at, but basically you just follow paths from town to town. Eventually you'll find the train station, and for a fee, you can take the train to whatever town you'd like. Provided the game doesn't literally prevent you from going to that town, depending on what part of the story you're in. The absolute best, though, is if you can find yourself the teleport ability. Um, because it is kind of hidden in the game, just a little bit. But if you could find it, bam, you could teleport to any town you've already visited in the past. You take a running start, and boom, you're off and to your destination instantly. Now the funny thing about the teleport ability is you have to give yourself room to teleport because if you don't, this could happen to you. Boom. <laughs> Before I move on to some of the negative aspects of this game, I just want to point out that the graphics and the sound in this game are absolutely amazing. Uh, the isometric view and the, the very colorful overworld is, um, is, is just really something you don't see in a lot of NES titles. And the music in the game is just absolutely amazing. Take a listen. Now I just want to point out one thing in this game that come, just pops in my mind as a kind of a big negative in this game. And that's the fact that the game doesn't really provide any useful descriptions for uh, items, what they're used for. And even more particular, your uh, psychic powers and abilities during battle. It just absolutely does not tell you what they do. As a matter of fact, I had to go online and print myself out cheat sheets for all the uh, PSI powers because, you know, if you don't know what you're doing and you select something and it doesn't work, it still takes away your points anyway. In fact, I think this is one of the reasons why Nintendo hasn't released Earthbound on the Wii's Virtual Console, because this game does require some documentation. That aside, this is a fun little RPG with a solid story, and it never really seems to deviate from the story at hand. There are very, very few side quests, and, and those side quests are kind of pointless in nature anyway. So you're basically following the same storyline, and you're not going to get lost. Um, there are some twists and turns, but nothing you know major. Nothing that completely shifts your attention away from the main story. All that being said, I'm going to have to give this game an 89 out of 100. I'd like to be able to put this game up in the 90s out of 100, but the game just automatically assumes that you know what items and uh, psychic powers are used for, uh, despite the fact that you, you're just seeing basically healing alpha, L, healing beta, healing omega, when you know all of those things heal different things. I mean, it just doesn't tell you. And even if you have these notes by your side, there's still some uh, parts of the game where I just got completely stuck on and needed to look at a walkthrough. And it just turned out I needed to do things a specific way in order to advance. All that being said, let's end the review on something hilarious. Nintendo the game failing to teleport. See you next time. Bye.